Thank you. I do want to get into the topic of relationships with you before we wrap yeah, up. Yeah, and so in today's society, I mean, you're someone obviously that a lot of people look up to. I, when we were in the meet and greet line and I was watching the way that people would approach you after your show, the first live show that you did in Arizona. And you can truly tell that the way that people look up to you is something that when you talk, they take it to heart. And in today's society, a lot of men I've noticed, especially my generation, find it very difficult to find genuine love today because of what social media pushes out there into the world and the materialistic routes that we've taken. And so speak to the young men out there who collectively agree that this generation is the hardest with finding a legitimate significant other and they're trying to find true love out there. How important is it that your significant other is Christian or are there other aspects to look into when finding a, a significant other? Uh, when I met Bella, she was like Christian, but like not, she never practiced. Mm -hmm. um, and I do believe that the man leads the house. So before you get married, you might want to be on the same page of life. So the kids are not divided. But when you're dating, you should go out there and experience and, and find what you're compatible with. Uh, I think my like secret to success is I one day was like me and Bella got in an argument and you know when you get in an argument and you, you like act like somebody you're not because of anger and emotions mm -hmm. and all that stuff and I walked away we we're taking a break and we already kind of like moved on from it and we're laughing we're hanging out but that night I was reading the gospel and it really hit how God really monitors the way that we represent our women because that's how we're representing our God think about it God says to love your wife like your church so when I get fed up with her and I'm like, yo, I told you a million times, blah, blah, blah. And I say mean things and stuff like that. I'm like, wow, is that how I would treat my God hmm. if he didn't play the way I wanted to play? And then also, what if my God treated me so ruthlessly? Like, you made this mistake twice and I had enough. It's like twice, bro. From 9 a.m., I failed God a hundred times. So God's like, really? So you're, the love of your life can mess up twice and you'll lose your top. But you come to me and you beg me for remorse, but you don't choose to give her remorse. So when I changed that and I became a servant to her, then all of a sudden all these beautiful qualities she started to develop. And we started now wanting to serve each other rather than show each other who's boss or what's going on. And she was submissive and I was a leader. But I also submitted to her the way that God submitted to the church. A lot of men want to be like the, this is my house, my rules, but they didn't even build a house yet. Mm. And so I think you just got to know your role and you got to be meek and humble. The best advice that I could ever get, have I ever gotten, was in Proverbs when God says that a good woman is a gift from the Lord. So now when I look at Belle, I'm like, dude, that's my gift from God, dude. How but am a lot I treating of, that? A lot of single men out there who would hear that and say, okay, well, I haven't gotten my gift from God yet. And then they could become very resentful to God because they're like, well, why, have, why hasn't he delivered me my gift yet? I think it's very dangerous to ever build resentment off of not getting what you want. That's some that's coming from a person who's well educated and experienced with with Christ, right? But a person who's a casual Christian, let's say, may not understand what you're saying exactly. That's that's a problem with their heart, not really their relationship. And imagine bringing that heart into that relationship. I don't think you're ready for that because that heart is already telling me that you're not ready to love and serve, mm. which means why would God give you the gift yet? Because then you destroy it and you wouldn't even be able to be, you know what I mean? Like that's very powerful. So think about it. So if you're, if God hasn't given you the woman of your dreams yet is because you're not the man who's ready to receive it. Right. Right. I was a whore straight up, bro. I was more of a whore than that whale you were talking about. <laughs> And, uh, this freaking will, and dude. dude, let's just say this atheist looked at me. He goes, I don't get it. I thought you believed in God. And I was like, I do. And he's like, aren't you wait? Like, why are you acting like this? And I said, I'll act like a gentleman when the right girl shows up. And he goes, that doesn't make sense to me. Cause he's like, if your father's up there and he's your father, mm -hmm. he goes, and that means that's her father. So why would her father give him to a punk like you? And I was like, dog, when an atheist had to break down how God perceived me, like I was just like, all right, I need to make some changes. And uh, I made some changes and, and I really, really, really tried hard to be a good man. And randomly some dude just went into my life and said, hey, dude, I think I just met your wife. And I was like, what? And I met her and wow. she's my fiance now. I didn't work for it. Mm. I didn't deserve it either. But I think what I showed God is I positioned my eyes, my ears and my feet towards what that is and mind you when i received it 
oh my God, there's so many other battles than that. I think what happens is the devil, when you're lonely, goes, look at you, you're lonely, you don't got a woman. And then when you got a woman, they're like, what is wrong with you? One woman? There's all these women out there. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Hmm. So I would rather take care of what God gave me and appreciate what I have. So if you're single right now, start working on yourself and take it like the opportunity of being alone and not having to worry uh, and and uh, tell somebody where you're at or experience being alone by yourself. Because if you like, say you're like in your twenties and you're like, oh, I want a wife. And then you get a wife. And then now the rest of your life, you have a wife and you're like, man, I wish I had time alone to think about who I am and, you know, think about things. So it's like a lot of people always want to rush their chapter that they're in. And when they already move on to the next chapter, they always go, man, I wish I would have like, like understood what I had when I had it. And it's just like, I'd rather just appreciate my day now. Wow. Like the present is a present from God. So I just want to live in it. It's a gift. In that case, then what are some red flags that men should watch out for in a woman? Red flags? Or let's make it simpler. What are like the top red flags that you looked for when you were scouting for a woman for you to consider to be your wife? You know, it's so funny, bro. Like I didn't know what good quality was until I met Belle. Belle really changed me. And she was so good and so meek and so humble and so loving that it encouraged me to be a better man. So I think I want to worry about red flags because I think we all have red flags that we could work on together. I think find somebody that inspires you to be a better man. And I think that's then you'll be in a good place mm. because, man, like I, I, I couldn't imagine my life without Belle anymore. Like without her in it because of like what she gives me when it's like if I'm in a bad place and she reads me the gospel or the way she like makes me a meal and loves me and I could buy a home but she makes it a home there's so many beautiful things in women that are out there but men are more focused on the wrong things mm. I think every woman might have a red flag but if you appreciate where they're coming from and understand them and be the leader and lead them out of where you think is wrong I think that you could have a beautiful relationship. Um, so I, I'm not really concerned with red flags. I'm more concerned if, if that person is willing to work on the red flag. If that makes sense. That does make sense. And I also noticed that women will, will say red flags about men, but they're more willing to overlook them in a man if they truly like the man. Yeah. I've noticed that too. But let's say hypothetically speaking, your, your, your fiance was not as a devout of a Christian as she's become. Would that have changed the dynamic of your relationship or would you have still stayed committed into it as when you first oh, met her? Oh, if she like denounced Jesus? Or like she's grown in her faith ever since meeting you. It's yeah. very obvious and she's said it publicly on your podcast a few times too that she's grown in her faith because yeah, of yeah. you and your family. If she just stayed at level one, let's say, when you first met her, would that have changed the dynamic? Yeah, of course, because like that thing that I was telling you about that made me a better man, that was the Holy Spirit moving in her as well. Because we're partners on Earth. So you're growing together. Yeah, of course. It was impossible not of to course, grow together. Of course, A thing in, written in the book called um, Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, who's this amazing author that I'm, I'm absolutely infatuated with. He's written The 48 Laws of Power and, and those such. And he wrote that in your life, there's two instances when you feel most alive. One of them is when you're a kid. It's like when you go on those field trips in life and like the air is crisp and you feel this excitement. You're about to go on the school bus and see all these new things. When you're a kid, the whole world is new to you. Yeah. So you feel this level of just just love and, and an emotion that's just amplified. And then through life, as repetition goes on and you go to school and the homework, and all the BS of life that comes along with it, you become more numb to life. And then when you feel those same days when you were a kid, like the feeling you got in Christmas morning when you were a kid, just don't feel the same when you're an adult because you've just grown up. But when you feel that same feeling when you were a kid on Christmas morning, as an adult is when you fall in love. Because again, your love uh, your feelings and your emotions are amplified to the same levels as when the world was new to you because this person is now new to you, right? So you've had an amazing life. You've had such a fun life. You've been all over the world. You've talked to some of the most influential and impactful people. You've become one of the most inf influential and impactful people. Do you constantly feel like your your life is at this high or were there moments where like life's felt numb and and it's been renewed in those mom in, in moments of relationships? Yeah. I super disagree with that theology. Uh, the reason why that kid feels that way on Christmas and when he's on a field trip is because he's grateful. 
that is why he feels it. it's not because it's new everything's new this whole this whole this situation's new if i went to a restaurant that's new as an adult am i going to be sad because it's old later on no it's it's if you're grateful like that same restaurant right if you never saw your cousin and he came from Iraq and you're like, oh my God, I can't wait. And we go, okay, well, I'm 50 years old. Why am I excited? I think it's because you're grateful. And I think the Bible describes uh, uh, one of the disciples as like, he's grateful and he's not in want. That to me was like the top level of joy and peace. What You know how rich in your heart or rich in finance you have to be to not want? That's a king level of like hmm. sort. And I think any man could have that if they're grateful for where they're at. Any man could want more. What happens is when we grow up, we become a little bit more evil, dude. And I think that's why the Bible says if you're a man but you don't have the childlike heart, you won't see heaven. Mm. So I think if you're bitter, you could be bitter at like, I know 16-year-old millionaires that are bitter already. But they're kids. But they're bitter. But maybe because that's because, it, it. right, because they stopped experiencing all of the things in life because they got everything right up front. They're, they just take things for granted. And I think those are the most depressed people, the people that they can no longer buy their happiness. But a child doesn't even care if he's at the water park or he's just in a backyard with a hose. Right. Because he's grateful for the moment that he's in. And he's not worrying about bills. He's not sitting there thinking about love. He's not worried about death. When you're a kid, you don't worry about the worries. You trust your mom and dad. You're in full faith. That's why you're enjoying every moment. Us, when we go to a park, we're like, oh, man, these mosquitoes are going to eat me alive. But the kid is like, oh, what is this thing? And he's trying to touch the bug. Mm -hmm. I think it was when a human being is just wrapped up in worry more than wrapped up in faith. Uh, because when I was at like a very cool part of my career where I thought I'd be very happy, I wasn't happy because I wasn't grateful. But then... God started working in my life and I started being very, very grateful for where I was. And that's when the joy and peace came back. Remember, the gospel says the peace that I give you is above your understanding. So if you're not in peace and you're not in joy, you really, really need to rekindle with your God.